Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at this Renault Kangoo. Now for those that haven't seen the video previously, I was comparing a Transit and a Caddy and I saw this in the background for half the price which made me think, is this as good as the Transit or the Caddy? Now of course it already wins on the price front but does it win on anything else? Now if you've seen the videos in the past we did a Transit versus a Transporter versus a Traffic. That's a tongue twister. And the Traffic came out on top for me. So let's see where this grades in comparison with the smaller vans. Now one of the first things that hits me is this key has not changed for some years. This is the same key what you'd expect to find on a Renault Clio from probably 15 years ago or somewhere thereabouts. And another thing what immediately strikes me is this dash. I mean, all vans like this have plastic dashes. This is not unique in having a plastic dash, but this is extra plasticky and I'm not sure if the traffic will like that I'll have to watch the video back to see what the traffic will like but this I mean it's plastic 9000 this is so 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 plasticky in comparison to the other vehicles and it is a very very basic vehicle and it is evident why it is half the price but is it half the quality and looking at it in here no it's not half the quality it's it's not as nice of course it's not as nice but it's functional, it's, it's a tool. And if you're looking to get a van for your business and this, this is just that, this is, this is just as a drill is. Um, it is a tool to get you from A to B to carry things to, to and from jobs. And I'm sure this does this as well as the other two. So yeah, overlooking the plasticky interior, everything else is pretty, pretty basic. We've got a very large storage hole on top of the dash. We've also got a glove box just by the passenger that wouldn't really fit much. A lot of it's blanked off by the fuse box cover but the main, the main bulk of it, you would probably get maybe your vehicle docks in there or anything else that's not terribly thick. You've also got a random weird storage compartment here, which I'm not quite sure what it's for, but I'm sure you'd find a utility for it if you did use this vehicle. Down the center console, we've got two cup holders and still, it still feels space age. I remember seeing one of these in, I think a Laguna for the first time. Um, and this, this handbrake still feels futuristic, even though it's been here many, many years. You don't have any storage above you like you do the other two vans. You do have quite a large cavity above you, so they could easily put a storage unit here. And I'm not sure if they are optional extras or they just don't have them at all, but it would be very easy to fit one in. Now, as you probably expect with this vehicle, there's no air conditioning, no climate control, no heated windscreen, which you might find in the Transit and the Caddy, depending on what spec you get. Now again, the door cards, super, super plastic here, not helped by the, uh, the gloss spray that's been put on them, but they're extremely plastic here. And there are no like comfort areas, but you do have electric windows, which I probably wouldn't have expected for a van at this price point. The seats, although cloth and pretty boring, they're still far more good looking than the caddy seats and they're pretty hard. So long drives, you might feel the pinch. So we've got no leather steering wheel again, but we do have an eco little bit of writing on the rev meter. So I'm sure that adds an extra one or two mile per gallon to the predicted mile per gallon of this vehicle. And finally, we've got a solid bulkhead just at the back here, which is what the caddy does miss out on. There's no solid bulkhead in the caddy. So the noise resonates through the vehicle quite a lot. So it was only when I opened this side door around here that I, I suddenly realized it was a sound that prompted it. Um, I've owned one of these before, not in the form of a Renault Kangoo, but in the form of a Mercedes Citan, which is identical to this, apart from a badge change. Engine, running gear, chassis, everything is identical. The parts are interchangeable. Um, yeah, they're slightly different headlights, slightly different bumper, slightly different front wings, but the rest of it is identical. So there are a few gripes I do have about this vehicle, but first of all, let's go into the loading area and uh, what you're gonna get for your loading area in this vehicle in comparison to the Caddy and the Transit. So the loading area of this is three cubic meters and when compared to the Caddy, it's slightly less and when compared to the Transit Connect, it is slightly more. One thing I can say about this though is when I fell off my motorbike and it was totaled, we did fit it into a Renault Kangoo, albeit a very, very tight fit. It was very tight and maybe assisted with the fact that my front wheel was in my radiator, but it did fit nonetheless. So 
One thing, to, one thing to consider, I reckon certainly with the bulkhead out and sliding the seat forward, you would almost certainly fit a motorcycle in the back of here. There are various tie down points in the back here. Um, they're nowhere near as strong as the caddies or the transits, but I'm sure they're more than good enough for what you would use them for. There's one very, very dated looking light on the side here. Um, it's not gonna provide much light in the form of trying to find things at night time. You definitely want to have a torch on hand when you're in the back here or replace that if you were to get this vehicle. You do have a door handle on the back so you can open it from the inside. And this one has been ply lined and it has evidently been used as a builder's van in the past. There's quite a lot of material in the back here, but overall it's quite a clean van. I mean, it's been used, but it, it's, it's been well looked after. So one thing I do remember about my Mercedes C-Tan is the quality of this side door and the noise it makes when opening and closing it. And it is, it is just not oozing quality and it gets stuck on the open. And this is not this van. My Mercedes C-Tan was identical. It's sometimes quite hard to get off the bottom latch and the door is, is very, very wobbly, to say the least. When the door is shut, you can see that the panels of this vehicle, they are quite thin. And I mean, I hope the mic can pick this up, but they are, that is unbelievably thin. I mean, it's not doing any lasting damage to the vehicle, but you can just see the amount of flex that's in that panel. It is a very, very thin panel. And that when compared to the Caddy or the Transit is very, very different. So then let's take this baby for a drive. Now, I'm not gonna need much of a test drive in this, because like I said, I owned one for about a year. And it's gonna be no surprise to me. Ooh. It's been in there a while. What it feels like. But I did modify mine quite a little bit when I had it. And uh, although I was, I think I'm probably the only person to ever modify a Renault Kangoo or Mercedes Citan, but it wasn't too difficult to do because of the, uh, the abundance of Renault parts from the MPV variant of this van. So I ended up putting a carpet in the front to assist with that sound deadening because we've already established that the panels on this are super, super thin. I also put some Mercedes C-Class seats in here, which um, didn't fit, but I made them fit with uh, some subframes. It was one of my first attempts at um, fitting seats. Uh, seats that shouldn't fit in a vehicle into a vehicle. That was like the prerequisite before I started modifying my transporter. But to drive and God, I never thought I'd be saying this because I'm such a VW fanboy, but to drive this is better than the Caddy. Sorry, sorry Volkswagen. And if you are watching these when I'm trying to work with you in the future, when I'm a, a big hitting YouTuber then don't hold it against me. But it's just that feel, that drive, and this has got a quality engine. I believe it's the 1.5 DCI engine. I'll put that on the screen and correct myself if it's not that, but if it's the same one that I had in my Citan, it's not a bad little engine. It's, it's a good bulletproof, reliable engine. And it's definitely not a slug by any means. Now, of course, it's a van. It's no like, it's no ST or RS, or it's, it's not a performance machine, but it's gonna pull what you want it to pull. Now, my Mercedes seat on quite a number of times, probably inadvertently, with my knowledge now, was overloaded quite a lot. And it did cope with it quite fine. I believe the load bed on this is capable of 600 kilograms. And yeah, I probably had that closer to 1.2 tons at times. Inadvertently before I had the knowledge of that. But now, of course, I wouldn't do that because that is dangerous and unsafe. But it's good to know that the suspension and the van will pull that sort of weight. So yes, although this van leaves a lot to be desired, and there are a lot of extras that you might get in a Caddy or a Transit that you would just wouldn't get in this. But it is a very nice van to own, and I did and I did own one, like I say, for a year, and it, it wasn't a bad ownership. I didn't sell it because I hated the van, I sold it because I wanted something bigger. And if I didn't need something bigger, I'd probably still have it now. I quite enjoyed owning the van. We do have an eco button that just sits down here. I'm not sure why you'd ever want to turn eco mode off on a van like this. Uh, I'm not sure why that's a thing. Why is that a button? Someone tell me down below, why do you think they have eco buttons? Is there a reason why they turn off? Let me know. But yeah, the engine's quieter than the Caddy. It's smoother to drive than the Caddy. 
it is a better drive than the Cadet, even with the lack of sound deadening in this vehicle. And of course, that is assisted by a solid bulkhead, and I'm comparing it to a Cadet that does not have a solid bulkhead, so it is, it is definitely not an absolute zero comparison, but it's nice, I like them. I like them, and I own one again. Nice little nippy vans, and it, it feels a lot smaller, uh, and it, it's not that much smaller, it does feel so much smaller. I don't know whether it's just the design on the side of it that makes you feel like that it is smaller, but it is a lovely, lovely drive. You never know, we might have one of these on the YouTube channel in the future where I put a clear RS lump in it. There is stuff coming up like that in the future, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and you'll be informed of the future videos. And they're not all just gonna be vehicle reviews, although I am trying to get a few vehicle reviews in, they're not all gonna be vehicle reviews. One of the main reasons for me doing a lot of these vehicle reviews just recently is to broaden my knowledge on vehicles, because I'm very single-tracked, I'm very Volkswagen Audi group tracked, and there's only one way to learn more about vehicles, and that's by doing your research on them, which is great that I'm working with Hamworthy Car Centre, and they give me access to all these vehicles that normally I wouldn't have access to. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope I've shown you some things about this vehicle that maybe you didn't necessarily know before the video. If you haven't already, please do go check out the Carre versus Transit comparison, I do understand that they are in a different price bracket to these. However, you can pick up caddies and transits for a very similar price to this. Although they might be a little bit older and maybe slightly different spec. But for the most part of it, the caddy hasn't changed in 10 years. And that's me for now, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.